Hey, I'll be with you in a second. <clears throat> We live? Okay. <clears throat> Give me one second, everybody. I'm trying to put some final, final touches on. Be within a second. I'm going to send out the alert so people know. And boom. All righty. So, I don't even know which camera I should be looking to. I guess I'm looking into this camera right here. All right, actually, uh, Tim, do we have camera three? Makes it a little bit easier for me. Do we have camera three? Can we put that on me? We're doing a little test here. We're trying to see how it works from our kitchen. We've uh, been putting up cameras and lights all day. Um, unfortunately, we're running into a little bit of a, uh, a headache, if you will, with uh, some of the technology here. This shouldn't be the case, but it is. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk about a couple of different things today. Hopefully, maybe, uh, Harlan will be joining me because that was the plan. Uh, he's here in the building, and um, he's trying to fix some sort of audio problem, which shouldn't be a problem, but it is. So anyway, we're going to go over a couple of different things. First of all, uh, I need to give you a big, big, huge apology. In fact, I'll tell you what, Tim, before we get into that, while we let the crowd build here a little bit, why don't we do this? Why don't we show them our different camera angles? Let's go to camera number one. Okay. That's not camera number one. That's camera number one. There you go. So we're trying to incorporate the entire kitchen in here. And um, what's the story? So you're wireless, what does that mean? I need to cut out. Okay. Well, you might as well come on in because you got the schedule, right? So, so <clears throat> anyhow, so you can see, oh, now you're blocking me completely. So we've got to move the chair back like we had it yesterday. Okay. So you can see we're trying to incorporate the entire kitchen in here for the walk and talk. We will have it here uh, period, uh, at different times during the week. Um, uh, go to number two. Yep, then you'll see that will be my direct hand. And then go to number three. We've got different shots here. we got this. Then let's get Harlan in there. There you go. Got a couple of spots there. So you see we're starting to uh, decorate the, the kitchen here with some of the goldfish uh, snacks <laughs> that we have. We're also putting uh, some of the other different stuff that, that you have sent us. So between this and the new studio in there, we'll have it. Another part that we'll have in here, while I'm letting the audience uh, grow here, Another thing we will have is uh, when I interview people here for the walk and talk, when I have guests come in, you will wind up seeing we'll have another television. We'll bring in another television in here, so we'll have a television with me. And also, you can see uh, Priebus is still there. And uh, from time to time, we are going to read some of the emails in there. So let's, uh, let's, let's focus back in on Harlan for a second. Harlan, um, why don't you do your sound, and we'll see whether or not it works, and you can tell people what it is we're going to talk about here today. One, two, three, four, five. You hear me, Tim? You're cutting out? Cutting out. Okay. All right. Why don't you try to fix that and see if you can't do that so this way we don't go through this cutting out stuff. You see, I see, I yeah, no, I see it. I see it. Okay. All right. So uh, a couple of things that we're going to definitely talk about here today. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff. A lot of it's same old, same old. So I don't want to go through the same old, same old. I want to try to switch it up a little bit, give you some new news that I think you uh, would want to know about, some stuff that will be a lot of fun to talk about in the future, like when we start cooking here on the walk and talks. I'm going to want you to send me all your recipes. We'll try making your recipes. I'll probably just destroy them, but I will at least eat whatever it is that we create. All right. So <clears throat> uh, first thing, we're going to play a clip here for you. Last night, I think Herman Cain, uh, I, 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 was, I, was, I felt like I was listening to a, an older southern uh, version of myself in African-American body. Uh, I have been telling you for a while now that the way that we need to fight back and try to help uh, President Trump and help making America great again, trying to get our agenda through, all right, and get back on track instead of talking about all this Russia garbage is that we need, the president needs to know, you know that the American people who support him continue to support him, that we haven't lost our faith, 
that we understand the fact that some of this stuff that they're trying to, to bring up is just absolutely ridiculous. And he needs to know this. He's one guy, and he's sending out messages, and he needs more messages coming in. So Herman Cain last night got on Sean Hannity's show, and he said something, and he gave out the phone number to the White House, which I think is great. So, Tim, if you got that clip, let's play that clip. And his administration know that the American people have his back. The liberal media doesn't have his back. We know that. The Democrats don't have his back. We know that. And even some Republicans, as you indicated, don't have his back. The American people has his back. So to the American people, you need to call 202-456-1111 and let the president know that we have his back. We are fighting back. Okay. Did you see that? That's, go on camera three. I'm more comfortable camera three. All right. You need to call 202-456-1111. You need to call. All right. If you've got a phone call that you were going to make today to your cousin, you're going to make a phone call today to your friend. If you're sitting in traffic, I don't care what you're doing. You take the phone and you dial 202-456-1111. All right. And what you do is you tell the president of the United States that you are 110% behind him. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to call right now on my phone. All right, we're going to call. So give me a second. Let me get this thing on speakerphone. Oh, my goodness. I'm so bad at using these things. Give me a second. How the hell do I get back to this? Keep head. How do I do this? One, two, zero, two. What is it? Four, five, six. Is it four, five, six? Four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Let's see what happens. It's busy. It's busy. Wow. That's the beautiful thing. It's busy. So you just keep on keeping on, okay? You drown. You drown that White House with phone calls today. You drown it today. You drown it tomorrow. You make it a new story. Make it a new story that the phone lines at the White House were crippled. Crippled. And I'll tell you why it's so important that you do this. I remember I was in a conversation during an interview for They Come to America 2 with Congressman Peter King. Uh, for those of you who've seen it, you know, you remember the scene that he and I in his office were talking about uh, the stuff that's going on in, uh, down at the border. And at the, end of the, at the end of the interview, we had the cameras rolling. Uh, in fact, Tim, Tim's dad, Tim's dad was my cameraman. And we had the cameras rolling, and I figured, you know, let me ask him some questions that are outside the realm of what it is that we've been talking about. And I said to him, Congressman, the American people are completely fed up with all of you in Washington, D.C. And he yeah, I know. And I said, you know, they feel as if nobody is representing them anymore. And he says, listen, they've got every single right to feel that way. What is the best way, Mr. Congressman, for Sally Jones and, and Billy Smith to get in front of you, what is the best way for the American who's frustrated, who isn't maybe a political wonk, uh, who is just so sick and tired of being sick and tired? What's the best thing? Is the best thing to get a picket and a sign and be in front of your, in front of your building? I mean, because so, I don't think many people really like to do that to begin with, they don't have the time. Is the best thing to send an email? Is the best thing to send a letter? What is the best thing to do? And he said, honestly, I can't believe I'm going to be telling you to do this right now because I think it's going to backfire on me. I said, well, what is it? He said, you know, who, people come to the office and they stand outside with a sign. He says, you know, they're otherwise annoying. He says, they send an email. I get so many emails. You know, we take a look at them when we can. You know, sometimes they put them on our desk. We're so busy, we go through them. He says, you send a letter. It gets mixed in with the different stuff that we get in. We get piles of letters like this. He says, but if you bust up my phone lines, he says, you, you, you just shut my day down. You shut my day down. If, I, if my, the people who are on my staff cannot operate, if the people on my staff are, are ready to pull their hair out because the phone will just not stop ringing, he says, that message is going to get to me because I'm going to ask 
I'm going to say, what the hell is going on? And I need to, what's the problem? Why aren't we getting communication back and forth? And so what will ultimately happen is that he is going to address what it is that you, that you have a problem with. That's one thing you need to know. You need to know that you have to use the power you have, the cell phone or the house phone, and you need to call that number. You don't stop calling that number because I can tell you already, I assure you, that the President of the United States, no matter where he is in the world, he is going to get that message. Somebody from the White House is going to call and say, Mr. President, I just want to let you know that we uh, just can't, uh, the, the phone calls are coming in, are literally breaking the system of support. And you know what President Trump's going to do? He's going to tweet about it. He's going to tweet about it. And he's going to thank Herman Cain. I, I guarantee you, as much as I have a black shirt and a tan hat, and I haven't shaved in days. <laughs> I, oh, what, is, are you working again? Yeah, I'm working. It's working? What did you do? We had to fiddle with the line. You fiddled with the line, and now, now you're It's not reassuring, but yeah. It's not reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do you agree with me? Absolutely. Do you agree? I mean, this, this, this prediction, do you I, agree? I absolutely. And one of my favorite, well, first of all, let me, let me say, during the Obamacare vote, I was actually, I was working in a congressional office temporarily helping out. Um, and it was a Democrat that was on the fence. He was like a blue dog, mainstream Democrat. He was socially conservative, you know. And, and he was on the fence. He was thinking about not voting for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. And he got so many phone calls in saying, if you vote for this piece of trash bill, this is back in you know, 2009, 2010, if you vote for this, we're going to vote you out. Mm. And I could see the expression on his face. This is Congressman Larry Kissel. He's since been voted out because he decided to vote for it. He knew that it was a death march, that he was, that he was, it was a political death sentence. But, and the reason he knew is because he was hearing from so many constituents that that was going to be it. Hold on and, a second. You can just, just bring that stuff to the kitchen table. Don't worry about it. Just don't hit any of the wires. Don't hit any of the wires. And, and, just put it up over here. Ha, I got gotcha. you. That's my daughter there. Uh, 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 I got you. My daughter just went out to go buy all the groceries. Yeah, I got you. Da, da, da. Uh, <laughs> hey, you got my credit card? Don't run off of my credit card. I oh, you got waters? All right. Anyway, all right, so let's get some of this stuff out of here. Yeah. Well, I can tell you what. I know it works. I'll tell you why I know it works. I know it works also because years ago, years ago, the, uh, there was, a, there was a, uh, an event in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and uh, everybody wanted me to speak at this event, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't getting an invite to it. And so finally, they, they met with me and they said, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to put you on. I said, all right, fine. And then they came back and said, no, we have no more room. Yeah. I went on. At this time, I didn't even have a million people like I have now. At that time, I had maybe 100,000. I said, here's the phone number to the guy who just screwed me. Mm. Their phone number, they lit up. Blew up. The guy called me at home and begged me, please tell the people to stop. You're yep. shutting us down. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I'm not telling anybody to stop. Yep. Obviously, they're very passionate about what it is that they want. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway. Well, anyway. One of, the, one of my favorite comments I just saw is that somebody suggested that they start doing this to CNN and the New York Times, demanding fair coverage. They both do have switchboards. I'm not going to give up a line because I'm on <laughs> CNN, but, but you can find it. <laughs> yeah, um. You know what? Maybe I'll call up... Uh, Maybe I'll call up Sean. <laughs> I'll ask Hannity. Or, yeah, Hannity or kill me. I'll say, you know what? I'm going to break my rule. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come on, and I'll, I'll call the number out. Yeah. I'll do the number. I have no problem. I want to try to call it one more time. I'm going to try calling it one more time. 1-2-0-2-4-5-6-1-2-3-4. No, no, no. It's one 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 one. That's the right number. So it's one two zero two four fifty six one 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 one. All right. So we'll try one more time. Yep. It's busy. All right. Colin, you want to drink a water? No, I'm good. Are you, you sure? No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I got, I got the coffee. Okay, so anyway, so we told, we told you about that. So now you know the phone number. You got to call. You keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. We'll keep on reminding you. You know, Harlan, in fact, tomorrow night I'm going to do a, a wine and talk, and uh, we'll bring it up, and we'll try calling at nighttime. I'm sure we'll have a good time. I'm sure we'll get through it at nighttime. We'll have a good time. Can you imagine that, me calling during a wine and talk? <laughs> yeah. Right? I got to make sure that I, I limit the amount of wine that I have. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should pour a little extra wine before oh, I make the phone call. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, let's let's keep moving on. So the next, what what else did we have here on the agenda that we were going to talk about? Uh, well, we had Comey, right? The uh, Comey thing. Comey so, thing. In terms of the New York Times. 
the New York Times and that clip of him from May 3rd. Okay. Which let, he may have incriminated himself. Yeah, let's do, the let's, do the, let's do the New York Times thing first. I'm a little familiar with this. Okay, I'll, I'll dive set into it up. It. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so last night, uh, and, and by the way, I want to, uh, I want to apologize. Uh, I did something last night that I've never done before, and I, I sort of did it uh, inadvertently. I've done it, I did it on mistake. Well, I didn't do it completely on mistake. I did it not thinking, and, and, and I want to apologize. Um, the last few days here have been absolutely insane, and they've been insane because the, um, the, the news cycle, the breaking news that's coming on with the special prosecutor and all the different stories that are coming out, whatever. Then, of course, yesterday we had the New York Times, um, the, 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 the New York Times, the Times Square fiasco. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we're going through all that. Uh, Harlan's sitting here trying to get, he's got a deadline to get all this stuff all up and running. I mean, he literally took everything down and put everything up. So he, he, when it comes to the website and getting stories out, He's useless to me in the sense that he's just so absolutely caught up with all this stuff. My son got delayed. He was supposed to be home in the beginning of the week. His car broke down as he was about to get on the, on the, on, on the uh, auto train. Mm -hmm. He got delayed, so I didn't have him. Anita mm -hmm. is on vacation this week. So when it comes down to it, I have been basically doing everything with my writers on the website from, more, from the crack of dawn to the time it hits 12 o'clock. So last night, uh, it wound up becoming uh, like 11 o'clock, and I had not, in fact, just so people know, my daughter would uh, you know, attest to this, is that I I'm in the car, she's driving, I'm in the car doing articles and sending things to people. Last night, while we were driving home, yeah. I actually dictated her to her what the letter to the tre uh, president was. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, this is a great letter, Dad. I said, thank you. So I said, just save it. I want to make sure that I take a look at it before I send it. Well, I, I didn't get a chance to send it. Long story short, I didn't do it until 11 o'clock. And I'm so used to, after I put the letter out, to I, th I then send it to, to Trump's yeah. uh, number one person. Yeah. And then I go and I put out the alert mm -hmm. to the app. Mm -hmm. And I did that not realizing the fact that it was 10 after 11. And so I had one woman come in and say to me, Dennis, I love you, but at the end of the day, you just woke up my baby. You know, mm -hmm. It's not breaking news. You didn't yeah. need to send me at 11.15, you sent the letter. So my apologies for doing that. It's just so routine on me, and I was so tired at that time. Yeah. I was just like, ah, oh, I forgot it. So I, 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 I yeah. apologize. But um, I can't remember. Oh, so while I was doing that, that's the other reason that distracted me. Last night, late at night, uh, the, the New York Times put out a story, for those of you who haven't seen it, that uh, they actually have a named source. This guy's last name is Wits. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what his first name was. But he basically said that Comey has told him, they're friends, he works at the Brookings Institute, which is a think tank, yeah. which is, as far as I'm concerned, completely, absolute liberal. And on top of that, what they don't tell you is that they get their funding sources from all over the world, foreign nations, this Brookings Institute, of which many of them are Middle Eastern countries. But that's another conversation for another day, okay? So to that extent, they, uh, this guy gets on the phone with one of the reporters at the New York Times and tells him that in the dinner um, uh, conversations that he has had with Comey, that Comey said that he was very uncomfortable and uh, I think it was it said unsettled with the behavior of the president. Mm -hmm. And that the president actually called him shortly after being in office and said to him, hey, when, by the way, are the feds going to put out some kind of message that says that you are not investigating me personally? And Comey, allegedly, from what he told this, from what he told Wits, is that uh, he said to the president, Mr. President, it is not appropriate for you to call me and ask what is the status of an FBI investigation you need to go through the proper channels, mm -hmm. which is that you need to go to the White House uh, Council, yeah. and they will therefore send me something yeah. if they want to know, and if we want to respond, and how we respond, we will. But this is not the way it works. And so he said that what he was trying to do, and that what he has been trying to do over the course of time, is bring the White House, a rookie White House, up to snuff, in the sense that he was trying to like, you know, get them what the guidelines were. But at the same time, he said like Priebus, Reince Priebus also had asked. And so this is all coming through this guy, Witt. And this guy, or Witt's, or Witt's, Witt's has, yeah. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. But this guy tells the New York Times 
that Comey became very uncomfortable and all, all, like in a sense turned off mm -hmm. by Trump, like didn't want to be around him, that he actually tried to embed himself in the drapes, that big room that we always show in the B-roll. I think Tim has it. So Tim, you know that, that B-roll that you have of Comey where he's walking across the room and, and then Trump's there and there's like the press there and stuff like that and he sort of goes to give him a hug? Do you got that? Take a look for it, see if you can get it, and, and we'll play it. Tell me when you got it. I could hear you from, from the control room. Just let me know before you play it. So Mr. Wittes turns around and says that Comey, when he was coming across the room, you know, he could see that the gesture of Trump was that Trump wanted to give him a hug and that he didn't want to be anywhere near uh, President Trump and that he was trying to blend into the drapes so this way he wouldn't get picked off. Yeah. So this is the message that he has given to this guy, Wittes, and Wittes said that basically uh, President Trump uh, made him feel unsettled. Okay, that was that story, and if we get it, we'll, we'll stop and we'll play it. You got it, Timmy, or no? Uh, don't worry about it. We'll move on. The, the other thing is people keep saying to remove the live sign, so Facebook has changed. What's that? Where they put the live logo. Where is it? it? We don't have it on our screen. So oh. if you guys are seeing that, it's no, covering I, Dennis's face. It's, it's, on, it's on mobile. It's on like mobile? at the top of your head. Really? Yeah, it's in the what center of the screen. What is wrong with them? Why, do, they keep, why do you keep touching stuff, Facebook? Yeah. Unbelievable. I, I only say it because I keep seeing it. People think that it's us, and it's, it's not. All right, why don't you tell I'm going to take a look at my cell phone, because yeah. I'll change my, where my ch ch uh, seating is. Why don't you take over and explain to them? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Explain okay. to them about the next thing, about the, the thing with Comey while I take a look. Yeah, yeah. So, the, well, it seems like it's been a never-ending story with Comey. D Tim, do I, have a, do I have a tight? Yeah, so it's been sort of a never-ending story with Comey, and it's a drip, drip. I feel like, and I'm, I'm going to get into this, to this story, I feel as though Comey's started to be caught in a little bit of a lie. Mm. And it started out with them, it, there's no question that he pushed this story through back channels about there being a memo in which he claimed that he was being compromised by the President of the United States. But we have a clip that has kind of taken the world by storm over the last 24 hours of Comey just days ago on May 3rd, testifying in Congress, saying that he had never been compromised by anybody at the White House, by anybody at the Justice Department. Now, Tim, let's play that clip, and I'm going to tell you why I feel like he's been caught in a lie. Senior officials at the Department of Justice opposes a specific investigation. Can they halt that FBI investigation? In theory, yes. Has it happened? Not in my experience, because it would be a big deal to tell the FBI to stop doing something that, without an appropriate purpose. I mean, we're oftentimes, they give us opinions that we don't see a case there, and so you ought to stop investing resources in it. But I'm talking about a situation where we were told to stop something for a political reason. That would be a very big deal. It's not happened in my experience. So, so Dennis, what Comey just said there days ago, this, and we have to put this into context, this testimony before Congress came after the supposed or the alleged memo in which he claims that the president uh, tried to compromise him. So one of two things has happened. Either one, this memo doesn't exist, and this has been a total fabrication to try to undermine the president of the United States, or he perjured himself when he was under sworn oath to tell the truth, and he said that the president of the United States had never compromised him. So which one is it? Or... Or there's a third one. Okay. You ready? If you are going to work for me, mm -hmm. you are no longer permitted to be on CNN. Right. Ultimatum. Yeah. Ready for the next one? Yeah. I can't understand for the life of me why you continue to go on CNN. <laughs> okay. Now, if you want to take what I said on the second go yeah. and try to make it as if I gave the same message I did on the first one, mm -hmm. you are misinterpreting. Yes. Because I'm not telling you, I can't tell you, per our contract, mm -hmm. where you can and cannot go. Mm -hmm. So why would I do that knowing that I can't do that? I can say to you, I don't know why you're going on there anymore. Big now, difference. Now internally, am I trying to send a little message to you? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But am I going to incriminate myself? Am I going to push the envelope past something I'm supposed to and not supposed to do? No. Yeah. Or maybe I just said it because I simply cannot understand 
Why do you still go on CNN? <laughs> yeah. so, so to that extent, Comey takes that yeah. and understands something. I don't know. What, 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 where, where, where are we? All right. Understand something. There is an old, there is an old saying that lawyers are spoilers. Okay? And the same thing comes when it comes to these FBI guys. They sit there and they're taking all their notes. If he's going to sit there and take every single last thing literally, and that's the way he's going to make his notes, okay, and he's going to take things out of context, well, then if you're reading the letter and that's what he's doing, what he's doing is he's taking the notes as in, Dennis no longer wants me to be right. on CNN. I, I, no, I didn't say that. I said right. I can't understand why. That's the way Trump talks. Yes. So that's the third case scenario. So you've got what Trump did say, but it's completely misinterpreted in a way that now is making him look like he tried to but, stop but, an investigation. But the timeline's important. And this memo is said to have come quite some time before this testimony. So either he reconsidered what he wrote in that memo or he perjured himself. If the memo is written as, as the memo claims it is. You, hear, you don't understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but that, that's, here's the problem. The missing part of all of this is Comey. Yeah. We don't, you know, Comey hasn't stepped up yet, mm -hmm. which I think is a little bit dirtbaggish, to be yeah. quite honest well, with you. Well, why would he? What? He's getting what he wants, right? Attention. He, he, and he's pissed off at his former boss. And, <laughs> and he doesn't like Trump. I don't yeah, think he, yeah, I, I mean, it. It, let's say, for instance, the stuff that this guy Wittes just said. Yeah. You know, he doesn't like Trump. Yeah. Now, you've worked with people before you don't like, sure. right? but you still got to work with them. Yeah. You know, I, I've sat there before and said to my wife, listen, I can't stand being around this person. I got no choice. I got to be there. I got to do it. I mean, yeah. you know, I can tell you that there were plenty of people at Newsmax. I'd be like that. Sure. I, 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 I'd be the first one to say it. Here you go. Here you go. I'll tell you right now. I hold nothing back. Steve Malsberg and I did not like each other. Really? Oh, yeah. He, I, he didn't like me. Yeah. I, he used to love me when I'd fill in for him and we'd yeah. get a nice audience. Oh, it was the cat's meow. But then when all of a sudden this started and I was the number one show, I mean, he literally, oh, oh, I went up to him one day and said, hey, Steve, whatever. Uh -huh. I, I said something else to him about something with Chris Christie, whatever. Uh -huh. Two times. Wonder what? Oh, because I, he used to be the number one guy. Now I come and be the number one guy. Instead of being a team, it yeah, was one that been individualized. You know. So, so I mean, literally, yeah. you would walk into Newsmax, and there would be the Malsberg side, and there would be the Lynch side. Uh -huh. you know, now, the good news is I held all the cards at that given time, because I'm the one with the rating stuff. Yeah. So he always felt as if, you know, like, and I, I had, you don't want to talk to me, don't talk to me. Yeah. But, but the point being is that I would go home and I would say something to my wife, like, I can't stand, I can't stand. And she'd say, hey. He's in the same place you are. Yep. You guys are on the same team. You got to keep it together yep. or whatever it may be. And you just get past that. I think Comey probably went along those lines. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing you're talking even, even though he doesn't like the president, even though he's pissed off he got his job, he got fired, he has a responsibility as an American. Mm -hmm. He sees how much turmoil this is causing. He sees with all these different things. There's national security stuff at risk. Absolutely. And he's letting it go. All he'd have to do is put out a damn tweet. All he'd have to do is get on television one time. All he'd have to do is anything and just say, listen, I, the guy said it and, and he said it in sort of, well, you know, Lucy kind of way. I don't really think he was trying to do anything. This is over. You know, should Trump have handled the firing differently? Because... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because Comey was in L.A., they sent a letter to his office in D.C., he had to have one of his subordinates open the letter and read it to him over the phone. He found out originally through the news, like looking at TV and thought it was fake. I, I, honestly, no, I, you know, I'm a big defender of the president. I know what you're saying. But that's not real cool. I, I, hold on. I, you know, the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that the way that the president has gone about a lot of things... Yeah have not been the smartest way of going about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I actually, last night I, I did, last night I watched um, Fox News at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. because I was trying to see whether or not they were doing this New York Times thing. Yeah. And, and right before 11 o'clock. And Sean wasn't covering it. I guess he wasn't live, I have no idea. And uh, Tucker came on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm re-watching Tucker's opening statement from yeah. uh, eight o'clock and he said, he said, you know, the president isn't the best manager. The president, you know, he, he's doing things reverse end that he should. He's sending out tweets that uh, Dick Durbin said are ultimately going to hang himself. You know, people are starting to come to where I was a long time ago about these tweets. They got to stop. 
he went about the firing of Comey in the way that he's been going about things his entire life. If anybody thinks that this guy is going to change the way he does things, he's not. He's not. He's not going to do it. The way he went about the ban was poorly done. The way that I, he shouldn't have tweeted yesterday yeah, yeah. that this is a witch hunt. He just keeps on doing those things. So there is a certain level, and, and, and yeah. Tucker said this last night, where he's bringing a lot of this stuff upon himself. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, whether he fired Comey by just screaming it out, hey, you're fired, or whether he sent him a letter or whether he went through the right channels, the guy had to go. Yeah. That's the bigger well, thing. Here's the problem. They're treating Twitter and Facebook and a little bit of press that the White House team does as the only form of communication. And when they do something, when they roll out a big thing like the ban, or they roll out a big news event like the firing of James Comey, they should have talking points ready, and they should have reasons for why they're doing these things, an explanation to the American people, and not just flying by the seat of their pants. It's not that their decisions are bad, it's that the rollout is really bad. And I'm not sure, does that come from the top, or is it because they're incompetent people running his communications shop? I think there's a, from what I know about Donald Trump and yeah. the people who I have talked to over the course of time, he expects unbelievable amounts of loyalty. Mm -hmm. he, he, he wants more loyalty than he gives. Yeah. Okay? He expects loyalty, and he expects that you're going to talk about him in a good light. If you don't talk about him in a good light, go ahead, you go through the camera. <laughs> Um, if you don't talk about him in a good light and you don't offer that ultimate loyalty, <laughs> then he, he has a problem. I'll have a water too, bud. Yeah. Then, 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 he, then he has a problem. All right? Then he, then, he gets off, then, he, then he gets off. I think that some of these White House staffers are a little bit intimidated yeah. by not knowing what he's going to do next. They're all feeling like they're walking on a bit of thin ice. Like, I'll give you an example. The Kimberly Guilfoyle thing. Yeah. She says that she was talking to him about this press secretary thing. If, if that's the case, if he really was, and he's entitled to do that if he wants, he should have told Kimberly Guilfoyle, don't ever say a damn thing about our conversation. And if he did, I guarantee you Kimberly Guilfoyle would not have said it. Would not have said a thing. Yes. Would not have said a thing. And now instead, what she's doing is she's loose lips, and she's out there, and she's doing all the different sure. stuff. Oh, yeah, blah, blah. And Spicer's like, wait a second. Yeah. Nobody's telling me this stuff. So they're all walking around with eggshells. That ultimately mm -hmm. is leadership. Yeah. That is leadership. Mm -hmm. And so we are seeing where he isn't, you know, look, at the end of the day, Donald Trump is not a perfect person. Who is? No, no okay? Way. So we're starting to see some of the things, because we're with him every day at this new capacity, mm -hmm. where he does have some short, short change parts of his personality, but these aren't hard to fix. Yeah. Like you said, let's get into yesterday, right? Yesterday, Harlan and I are talking, and we were sitting here strategizing about the shows because we're starting to get into this next phase of getting ready. And I said to him, look, I need you to come back to me with our plan, and this time I want you to come back to me with the plan, not just talking, because we do a lot of talking. Yeah. I want you to come back with it written out, I want you to have it in a consultive sort of way. Mm -hmm. Now, why did I tell you to do that? I, did, I told you to do that for two reasons. Number one is because I want it on paper, mm -hmm. right? So we can make notes and we have it. Number yep. two is, is that I want you to go through the channel of looking at what it is that you're putting down on paper yep. versus what it is you're just saying out loud. And then, therefore, when you see something looking back at you, yeah. you may say, ah, that's not a good idea after all. Yeah. I would love to see the president mm -hmm. slow down a little bit yeah. And do that sort of thing, saying, okay, this is how it is that this stuff has to go. Yeah. What do you guys think? Or come to me and say, how should we put our communications out? Mm -hmm. How do you think we should go about it? And really sit there and say, I know that you may be telling me no more tweets. I want everybody to be honest with me and tell me ultimately how you'd like it to work. You know what the problem is? No one's ever figured out how to manage Donald Trump. You can't manage Donald Trump. That's, I know that this sounds crazy. But that's, un that's an unusual thing. I mean, I can remember I was on a very big Senate race. And it was when I was just starting in politics. And the, campaign the candidate was in the room. And he was a sitting U.S. senator. And I referred to him as boss. After he left the room, the, the chief consultant said, he's not the effing boss. I'm the quarterback, and he's the football. And we won the race in a landslide. And it was a race that we shouldn't have won to reelect this guy. 
And that changed my perspective. And I started to see this on a lot of successful campaigns and a lot of successful teams. The candidate often doesn't know. They're not thinking strategically. They're, they're, they're a leader in a different capacity. But in order to be politically successful, and oft, oftentimes, I think you need somebody that has a different skill set than the candidate would. And that Trump, President Trump has never found that person. And he, yes, he, was, he ran a successful presidential campaign. But nobody can manage him. And I think that he needs help. You know, I, the, uh, no disrespect to you. Yeah. I, I think the word manage him comes out wrong. I don't mean that. But I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. See, what, what you're saying is that the president is never going to get into the nuances. He's never going to get into the nitty gritties. Yeah. He's, he's just not going to do that. Yeah. He is the spokesperson for the policy. He is the salesman. Mm -hmm. He really is. That's what the, he is the salesman, yes. right? For many of the things that have to go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, he's the decision maker. That's another thing. No, but, no question. But what, what we're talking about here is that, let's say, for instance, let's say, for instance, the president were to pick me, mm -hmm. all right? I would sit there and be like, okay, this is the way our messaging has to be, yep. all right? We are not, and he's not in the room, right? Yeah. So it's all of us. It's what? The 3,000 people and all of us. We're sitting around. We're in a room. We're in a big auditorium. And I'm up on there, and I'm going to ask raise of hands, right? How many people? And I want you guys to use the like, uh, the little buttons if you like it. I'll be able to see it as it floats by. I don't know. Did they take that away? I don't even see that stuff anymore. They're messing with it. They're, They're messing, messing with, with this stuff, product. right? I don't know why. Okay, so we're all sitting in a room. I'm sitting in the room with you guys. And I say, here's the way that it should happen. We are not going to have the president stop tweeting because that's going to take the life out of him. That's, gonna, that's why we ran a poll today. Should he stop tweeting? Should he continue to tweet? Or should he tweet like DML has said, just about the issues? Okay? 80% of the people, I think, at this point have taken that poll and said, listen to what DML is saying. Keep tweeting with the issues. If we take away his Twitter, it's like taking away the beach ball from the little yeah. boy. Okay? And I don't mean any disrespect in that. I'm just using an analogy. What we have to do as a team here, a communications team, is we need to help him get this message out, and we have to do it in the right way. He needs that tweet. He needs to see how many people share the tweet. He, this is why it was so important to him, Harlan, how many people showed up to the inauguration. This is why it's so important to him what his ratings are on television. He needs that. That's his fuel. So a lot of people blame him for that. A lot of people call it egotistical for that. I don't blame him for that. That's... That, that's what gets him going. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what gets him excited. Yeah. So we need to give him that level of excitement, yeah. but we need to control it. So this way he doesn't get out of control with it. So what we do is we're going to form that message every day. We're going to go to him with a couple of different tweet ideas and say, Mr. President, what do you think about these different tweets that go out for the day? When he picks the one that says, I want to send out a tweet that says, Comey is a loser. We say, Mr. President, the backlash, and this is where I don't think this, what I'm saying right here happens. Mr. President, the 3,000 of us have been together, and we've been thinking about this. And if you do go with the Comey is a loser, the one that you suggested, we did a raise of hands, and 2,900 of the 3,000 people that were in the room think that that's going to come back and hurt us later on. Yeah. We don't think we should do that. If you need to put something out to that this mm -hmm. degree, why don't we put something out that says... You know, it's really important for the intelligence community and the White House to have a cohesive relationship. We need to move in that direction. Why don't we do that? Well, I'm with you. You've got to make him see the light. I, I don't, I don't think that's idea. happening, Harlan. It's no, coming it's, out no, this no, way. No, it's certainly not happening. It's, it's, me say, it's me saying to you, put out a tweet today that says, Facebook sucks, I want it to die. And it's like you going away saying, oh, my goodness, and this guy so, wonders why he can't get his numbers up. So, so, <laughs> you know, so do you think that the people that are currently in the White House, because there are smart people in the White House, including Ivanka and Jared, or do you think that they're unwilling to confront him with these mistakes? Yes. Like the tweets? Yes. So, okay, so you, you, you don't think that they're in there telling him this all the time and he's just not receptive to it? Be there was somebody on television the other day, I can't remember who it was. It was a pro-Trump guy. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember what it was. It was a clip, it was sent to me. It was sent to me. 
the guy said, the problem is, is that when you go into the White House, everybody's walking around. There's no coordination, whatever. And it's like people are walking around the tr with President Trump, like Mr. Magoo, to make sure he doesn't do something that's just crazy off the wall. And I was like, wow, that, if that's really the way it's happening in the White House, that's a little scary. Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, and then they were talking about it. He said, no, I, I, I just, because they don't know what he's going to do next. Mm -hmm. And going back to where I was trying to make the example, maybe I didn't make it good enough. There's no process. There's no way of getting the communication out based on a process. But see, th that's the process the before the community. Wait, before okay. the words could go out, the outline has to be there. There's no outline. So Ivanka can't be at his side every single time. Yeah. So if he's sitting there and you're next to me yeah. and, I, and I say to you, all right, hold on, we're going to send a tweet right now because I'm reacting off Fox News. Mm -hmm. Right. And I say, oh, send out this tweet right now. Comey is a loser. What happens is that person is afraid yeah. and they put it out. There's no red alarm. There's somebody who's got to sit down with him and say, listen to me. This is, actually, let me just go on my soapbox for one more second because I want to say this. I thought about this the other day and then I hand it over to you. If I had the chance to sit with the president mm -hmm. for, what, for, for five minutes, mm -hmm. I, I, what would I do? This is what I would say to him. I only got five minutes. He says to me, hey, listen, you've been sending me these letters. Everybody keeps on telling me I got to meet with you. Why do I got to meet with you? I am not going to sit there and say to him, you know, uh, it would be really su a good suggestion if you did mandatory E-Verify right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste my time with that. I got to get in the door. Mm -hmm. So the way I'm going to get in the door is I'm going to look him straight in the eye. Straight in the eye. I'm going to say, Mr. President, I truly believe that you can make America great again. I truly believe that you can have your face up on Mount Rushmore, which will stay with, with this world long after you're gone. But if we don't change certain things, little twists here, little twists there, we're never going to wind up having you on Mount Rushmore, let alone getting you into your next four years. And what's going to happen is long after you're gone, people are going to be joking about you. And nobody's ever going to think about the buildings you made. Nobody's ever going to think about the golf courses you, you, you built. And nobody's going to ever be uh, crediting you for the wonderful children and grandchildren you have. They're always going to look back and one thing's going to be remember. Donald Trump was a joke of a president. That's not what you want your legacy to be. And there is a fine line right now between having your presidency be a joke and having your presidency be one that is worth Mount Rushmore. And what we have to do is control the narrative. If we could control the narrative, we will win this game. And the way that we control the narrative is we beat them with results and we beat them with messaging that people want and they cannot deny. That's not what's happening right now. And I can help you do that better than anybody else because here's the thing, Mr. President. I think like you. I act like you without some of the, the, the haywire stuff. I understand these problems and these issues. We think alike when it comes to it on how to fix it. And here's the biggest thing. I'm not intimidated by you. So when I see that you are going to put out something stupid like Comey sucks, he's a loser, I'm not going to allow Harlan to hit the send button. If you want that send button hit, you're going to have to fire me first. I'm done. Yeah. I walk out of the room and you know what Ivanka says? How much does he want a year? That person, that person, it doesn't have to be me. That person who says that to him, Harlan, yeah. we're in. Nobody says that to him. Yeah. I believe, I think people are saying it to him. You do? Yeah. Okay. Who, and, I, and I believe. Who, who's, who's, the, who, who's, who's the president listening to? Who's saying that to him? I'm sh look, I want a name. I find it impossible to believe. Who, give me the name. I'm sure Kellyanne Conway's done it. I'm sure, I'm sure Steve Bannon's done it. I mean, I, look, I'm sure that Manafort did it back during the campaign. I, I'm sure, well, I don't know about Corey, but I'm sure people have brought this up to brought this up to him. How could they not? How could they not? I don't think so. Well, then, he's, he's, then, then this undermines one of his primary talking points when he was running for president, which is that he knows to go out and he knows how to hire the best people. I don't think he knows how to hire the best people. Well, that, I, mean, I have never that, that agreed. I have never agreed with that. Yeah. I have met some of the people he's hired. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't think that. Yeah. You're going to tell me Roger Stone is one of the best people you can hire? You're going to tell me Manafort is one of the best people you can hire? You're going to tell me Corey Lewandowski is one of the best people you can hire? 
You know, with with Manafort and Michael Flynn's turning out to be not one of the best people that you can hire. With Manafort and and with Roger Stone. Well, Manafort's a little bit more credible than Roger was, but they were part of the Reagan campaign. To me, I thought Manaf were, Manafort to me was a, a a used car salesman at the worst end. They were part of the Reagan's 1980 campaign, and I think that they're effective communicators, and that's how they got their start. And I think that they're actually they have solid political instincts that a lot of other people don't. Um, and, and I don't believe, I do not believe President Donald Trump would be president of the United States today if Roger Stone hadn't been his um, consultant uh, in the early days of the I, campaign. I, I completely disagree with I that. I don't even think he would have run for president. He, he would not have been president today mm -hmm. had Kellyanne Conway not been hired. Well, that's so, true. So let me say, let me say this. Yeah? I don't think all of his hires suck, but I don't think all of his hires are all great. You know, you yeah. can't say that he surrounds himself with only the best of the best. I think what he does is he surrounds himself with people for whatever reason that he thinks can offer him something. And then when some of these people turn out to be a little shady or they turn out to be not so great or he's not exactly uh, thrilled with some of the things he says, he dumps them. Yeah. Kellyanne Conway, Harlan, yeah. saved. Well, there's no question. And Bannon saved that thing. There's After no Manafort, question. I think that thing was ready to blow up. There's no question, but I think there's a time at, well, look, Manafort was important. I mean, there's a time for everyone. And Manafort was important to securing the nomination as they were going through the process of getting the delegates. And look, for a while there, it seemed like Ted Cruz's campaign was positioning itself to challenge him and to upend the rules at the air. So my point is, mm -hmm. yes, you're right, that Kellyanne Conway was integral to him winning. But I believe that Manafort was, and he served his purpose. And I think Roger Stone served an early purpose. And one of my big takeaways from studying secretaries of state, or I'm sorry, excuse me, chiefs of staff, is that they need to know the president's weakness. Yeah, and, and, I just gave it to you. Well, I, you know, you could look at, at President Ford. Two of his chiefs of staffs were Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney. Mm -hmm. Two extremely powerful, no BS guys. And one of Ford's biggest problems is he's a former legislator and so he wanted to meet one-on-one -on -one with every person and they realized that that was impossible and that they had to manage his time better and they so they stood up to him to do it one of president donald trump's biggest problems is that he wants to over communicate and he feels as though that's been justified because he won the presidency but i feel like in many cases he won the presidency in spite of that and so and nobody's talking about taking the twitter away from him it's just as you said going through a process, but, and I know you don't like that word, managing, but that's what this is. It's, it's, it's having the guts to stand, <laughs> to stand there with the president and say, look, Mr. President, you trust my instinct. That's why you hired me. And, and, and I'm willing to put my job with you on the line because I think it's that important that you not make a mistake. <clears throat> I agree with you when you're saying about finding what his weakness is. Yeah. I think his weakness is, and I don't even know if it's a weakness, he has, it, it's, it's, it's not what makes him weak, it's what makes him empty. You know, he said that Comey is a showboat, and I don't mean this with disrespect, but you know, look in the mirror, Mr. President. Mr. President loves the camera. Mr. President loves the focus to be on him. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm not saying it. Is yeah, of course. Person. No, no, I'm backing it, you it's, up. It's, it's that if he is not getting the love, yeah. if he's not getting the attention, if somebody's draining the attention from him, he doesn't operate well. I, I've, this isn't something new for me. I've known this all along. He needs to be the guy in the room who's getting the cameras on him. So to manage that weakness, if you will, if you want to call it a weakness, it also happens to be a strength because when he says something, people want to listen. Yeah. They want to listen either because it's, it's uplifting, it's either funny, it's either not said correctly. I mean, I'll give you a ex perfect example. You know, yesterday he put out a tweet. You know, I got the same problem. I, I, I misspell things all the time. You know, there was the tweet, council was spelt with a C instead of an S. Mm -hmm. You know, 
He's got this way of saying things that are so imperfect, mm -hmm. and so people are just entertained by it. They're yeah. entertained by it, they're encouraged by it, they're lifted by it, and sometimes they're ready to fight because of it. That is, the fact that the president can get attention to himself is fantastic. We just gotta make the attention the right way. Mm -hmm. The fact, in my letter last night, I sent to him yesterday, there was a report that 17% of our workforce here in the United States, 17% is foreign born. The fact that that isn't tweeted out, if you wanna tweet out a negative, and we're tweeting out witch hunts, is beyond me. Secondly, the unemployment rate hit a 30 year low yesterday. Why aren't we tweeting that out? Yeah. That's what we should, that's the narrative why isn't MSNBC, CNN, and, and ABC, NBC, CBS opening up their shows? Can you imagine if it was Obama? I don't even know who CBS News is, but whoever the commentator is, it should be like this. Today, there was a report out. We have now hit a 30-year low when it comes to unemployment, thanks to President Trump. If it was Obama, it would say, President Obama walked into office and he had a terrible thing left over for him from President Bush. But within four months, he has now taken the unemployment rate to the best rate it has been in 30 years. Thank you, President Obama. They're not doing that. They're not doing that because Trump, Trump first of all, because they want to talk about Trump getting whacked at the knees. But secondly, and this is where I think the communication team is missing, the communication team has to take something as boring as unemployment rates and bring it into some sort of excitement. And they don't got that creativity. They don't got that creativity. They should be banging that drum and banging that drum and banging that drum. If we were in, if we were in the communications team, I'd say to you, you know what, Har Harlan? Let's get one of our video guys here in, in, in DC. Let's go find somebody, man. Let's go find somebody yep. who was unemployed, got a job, let's get him a Democrat and bring him to the White House for dinner. Yeah. And they're going to get to eat with the president and Melania. And we're going to film the whole damn thing. That will get the news. And yeah. it w that will get the news. And it will be about the unemployment. And then you're going to get a Democrat saying to the president, I wasn't able to pay my bills for the last seven years, Mr. President. And now I can. Thank you very much. Right. That's what you do. And nobody in there is doing it. Mm -hmm. Not Kellyanne Conway. Not Sean Spicer. Not Reince Priebus. Not anybody. Mm -hmm. All right. What else you got? Because we're running out of time here. 1222. Yeah, yeah. Um, By the way, I don't know if you guys like the new logo. I love the new logo. I love the new logo. I love the way it looks on the screen. Uh, we're going to have a little tagline. We're, we're, we're jumping around with different ideas, but right, right now it's sort of, we're thinking real news all the time. And so that's, uh, and I'm going to have Harlan make some really cool things where the clock spins and he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be busy working on this stuff. Always. <laughs> All right, well, what else have, we got? Well, so we had that, that article on DennisMegalinch.com about Trump going easy on Iran. I hate to pile on it here, but I know this is something that... People will be interested in. I, you it, it, got, it got buried. It got buried. What? It got buried in, in what? The, the news of the last 24 hours? From... Absolutely. It got buried. Yeah. So, I mean, how much do we know about that? I mean... It... Actually, you know what we should do? I'm going yeah. to push that off to Wine and Talk. I'll tell you okay. what, because I don't want to pound on them. Let's come away... One of the things that we get criticized from, from our folks here yeah. is they want some uplifting stuff that's, that, that's, uh, yeah. that, that's, coming, that's coming through. So we have anything on our list that's uplifting? We, we, we touched everything. We touched everything on I that? mean, the other thing was stocks are rebounding, but that's great. That's great. Let's <laughs> yeah. talk. Let's know. Yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. I think that's right. Well, it, I, you know, I, looked, I looked at my portfolio. Yeah. And in the last 45 days, it's up 50%. Really? <laughs> it's just like, President Trump's like the best thing to ever Listen, happen. Man, everybody's making <laughs> yeah. money. Everybody's making money I mean, on President Trump. Yeah. Everybody's, <laughs> making, everybody's making money it's crazy. on President it's Trump. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody's <laughs> making money on him. You know, it's, it's, but here's the thing. Here's the important thing, all right? I don't know which camera I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, but actually, if you could, Tim, use camera three, because I want to read some of these comments before we jump off here. Um, so... Uh, you know, what happened was is that the stock market has been on this crazy great run. And the reason why it's on this crazy great run is because the stock market is based on futures, on future earnings. So if companies are feeling very good about where things are going, meaning deregulation is taking place, new tax reform is going to be in place, Obamacare, which is a job killer, is going to be replaced, 
and they believe that this whole pro-Trump, pro-business agenda is going to get through. They're not like you and I where they want it yesterday. They're banking on, is it going to be in 12 months? Is it going to be on 18 months? Because my business is going to be able to get better. It's going to be more growth. That is ultimately what brings up a stock because of positive outlook. Okay. So what happened with all this stuff with President Trump going on with this Russia stuff and Lottie Dottie and the special prosecutor or whatever it may be, the stock market tanked the other day. I mean, I think it lost almost 400 points, right? It did. Okay. So it lost almost 400 points. So... What the thing was, oh, well, why did it lose all of its, why did it lose 400 points? And the reason why it lost its 400 points is because investor uh, concerns was that now that with this probe going on, that President Trump is not going to be able to get his agenda through. Now, if that really was something that was sustainable, something that really people believed that we were screwed and this guy was going to be like totally impeached, which he's not going to get impeached. But if you're going to get impeached and everything else like that, that really says we're not going to be able to go through with this agenda. And therefore, businesses will start to tape back. They won't hire as much. They're going to start hoarding some of their cash. They're not going to invest. Maybe they will stay overseas. la di da di da di da You get it. So we would have seen an epic drop. We would have seen the, the, the Dow would have had like five straight days in a row. It was boom, 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 boom. Wasn't the case. It was a temporary slip. And the thing now has started to come back up. Right? Yep, that's right. There you go. All right, you have anything else? I think that's everything. Yeah. You know, one other thing yesterday, before we go off, um, one, one other thing that uh, I want to say, you know, yesterday um, we had Roger Rails uh, passed away. And I was uh, talking yesterday about how it was that I would have never really been in this business right now had it not been for Fox News. Um, Fox News gave me a platform when nobody else would. You know, I couldn't get into film festivals with all of They Come to America films. I was spending crazy money on, on PR, trying to get into ABC, NBC, CBS, all these other different places. Nobody would give me anything. And it wasn't until Fox News uh, and Brian Kilmeade got me on there. <clears throat> and I had sent, I had told the story yesterday, that I had sent uh, copies of They Come to America 2 to Roger Ailes and to his wife. And three days later, I wound up getting a one-hour special with Sean Hannity. So, you know, Roger Ailes played a major, major role in that. And I had never, ever forgotten that. And one of the things I forgot to say yesterday, for, uh, filling in for the gaps for a lot of people who do not know uh, about my particular history pr prior to the election, because I know a lot of people started to jump on, uh, you know, the DML page and started following me around the election time. <clears throat> Losing my voice here. But um, one of the reasons why I no longer have my Fox, I mean, my, my Newsmax television show is because, um, aside from what I've told you before about uh, on, on a Monday, I was reporting about Hillary. Then on Tuesday, I was told I was no longer to, allowed to report on things that I wanted to report on. And then on Wednesday, um, I, I, they pulled me off the show with Harlan being my guest, sitting across from me like he is now. They pulled me off the show while I was giving uh, a monologue about how I was... Uh, not going to agree not to report things about Hillary Clinton. One of the other things that what happened that day, which triggered me off going into that direction, was that the CEO of Newsmax, Chris Ruddy, um, wanted me to play a hit piece about Roger Ailes. And there was no way um, that I was going to play a hit piece about a man who... Um, really gave me uh, the sort of opportunity that nobody else uh, would have given me. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's that. I mean, whatever he did on this other stuff, whether he did it or he didn't do it, whatever. But you cannot take away uh, from this man of the incredible things yeah. he did, especially when it comes to America. I don't think people understand how important Roger Ailes was. Prior to Roger Ailes starting Fox News, conservatives did not have a voice on television. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was left, and there was nothing else. Yeah. And thank goodness. I mean, George Bush Sr. Mm -hmm. came about and said that he doesn't think he would have been president had it not been for Roger Ailes. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to end off on this. It's 1229. We're going to go exactly one hour, and that's it. Um, 
Uh, I guess uh, the important thing here is to tell you that tomorrow night we will have our wine and talk. I'll probably do that sometime around 8 o'clock. Keep on going to DennisMichaelLynch.com all day. We've got great articles. My son is now uh, back, and he's spearheading a lot of that stuff. He's a talented guy. Uh, we're training a lot of stuff there. If you haven't gotten the DML app, you've got to get the DML app. I mean, yesterday uh, I got a lot of emails from people coming in saying, DM DML, you were in front of all this news all day long and everything. Thank God I had the app. I mean, this thing is the best thing in the world. If you don't have it, please go get it. You get it by going to the iOS store or you go to the Google Play store, you search for DML app, you download it, you put the notifications on, and periodically, once a year, I'll, I'll send you a notification at 11.15 at night. But most of the time, that's what I said last night. But most of the time, uh, we, just, we do it a couple times during the day with breaking news. Other than that, you're always going to have stuff going through the app, whatever. And um, so let us know what you thought about the kitchen setting here. All right, did you like it? Uh, let us know what you think about the new logo. Do you like it? Um, be delicate, because my daughter came up with it, and I also loved it. Once I saw it, I said, that's what I want. So anyway, we've got it. So you do that by you go up to the top uh, and, and you use the Submit News uh, button and, uh, and send us something from there. So each day that I do this, I, I make sure, I, I'm not going to read the Priebus stuff today because we, we waited too long, but I will go and read some of your stuff here because uh, Miss Mary tells me I have to all the time. Uh, here we go. You love the kitchen setting, Teresa says. Thank you very much. Whoa, uh, whoa <laughs> Roxana, that's not going to work. Next. <laughs> Who do we have next? All right, so we have Love the Kitchen. Kitchen yep. sound is great. Yeah. We've got Love It All. No Lieberman for FBI, okay? Uh, that may be something that we talk about tomorrow. Great, great walk and talk. Love the kitchen setting. Love the kitchen setting. Why not uh, free Soros? DML, thank you for your far left media. is trying to bring us down. I like both. Love the kitchen setting. Like the logo and the setting, fantastic. All right, looks like everybody's happy. We thank you very much. Okay, until tomorrow night, may God bless you. May God bless our troops. May God bless the president in these United States. And may God bless Harlan Hill for fixing his sound. <laughs> and Tim for fixing the cameras. And my daughter for bringing us the waters. Yes. All right? All right, over and out. of letters like this. He says, but if you bust up my phone lines, he says, you, you, you just shut my day down. You shut my day down. If, I, if my, the people who are on my staff cannot operate, if the people on my staff are, are ready to pull their hair out because the phone will just not stop ringing, he says, that message is going to get to me because I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, what the hell is going on? And I need to, what's the problem? Why aren't we getting communication back and forth? And so what will ultimately happen is that he is going to address what it is that you, that you have a problem with. That's one thing you need to know. You need to know that you have to use the power you have, the cell phone or the house phone, and you need to call that number. You don't stop calling that number because I can tell you already, I assure you, that the President of the United States, no matter where he is in the world, he is going to get that message. Somebody from the White House is going to call and say, Mr. President, I just want to let you know that we uh, just can't, uh, the, the phone calls are coming in, are literally breaking the system of support. And you know what President Trump's going to do? He's going to tweet about it. He's going to tweet about it. And he's going to thank Herman Cain. I, I guarantee you, as much as I have a black shirt and a tan hat, and I haven't shaved in days. <laughs> I, oh, what, is, are you working again? Yeah, I'm working. It's working? What did you do? We had to fiddle with the line. You fiddled with the line, and now, now it's you're It's not on? reassuring, but yeah. It's not reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do you agree with me? Absolutely. Do you agree? I mean, this, this, this prediction, do you I, agree? I absolutely. And one of my favorite... Well, first of all, let me, let me say, during the Obamacare vote, I was actually I was working in a congressional office temporarily helping out. Um, and it was a Democrat that was on the fence. He was like a blue dog, mainstream Democrat. He was socially conservative, you know. And, and he was on the fence. He was thinking about not voting for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. And he got so many phone calls in saying, if you vote for this piece of trash bill, this is back in you know, 2009, 2010, if you vote for this, we're going to vote you out. Mm. And I could see the expression on his face. This is Congressman Larry Kissel. He's since been voted out because he decided to vote for it. He knew that it was a death march, that he was, that he was, it was a political death sentence. 
So you're wireless, what does that mean? I may cut out. Okay. Well, you might as well come on in because you got the schedule, right? It's so, so <clears throat> anyhow, so you can see, oh, now you're blocking me completely. So we've got to move the chair back like we had it yesterday. Okay. So you can see we're trying to incorporate the entire kitchen in here for the walk and talk. We will have it here uh, period, at, at different times during the week. Um, uh, go to number two. Yep, then you'll see that will be my direct cam. And then go to number three. We've got different shots here. we got this. Then let's get Harlan in there. There you go. Got a couple of spots there. So you see we're starting to uh, decorate the, the kitchen here with some of the goldfish uh, snacks <laughs> that we have. We're also putting uh, some of the other different stuff that, that you have sent us. So between this and the new studio in there, we have it. Another part that we'll have in here, while I'm letting the audience uh, grow here, another thing we will have is uh, when I interview people here for the walk and talk, when I have guests come in, you will wind up seeing we'll have another television. We'll bring in another television in here, so we'll have a television with me. And also, you can see uh, Priebus is still there. And uh, from time to time, we are going to read some of the emails in there. So let's, uh, let's, let's focus back in on Harlan for a second. Harlan, um, why don't you do your sound, and we'll see whether or not it works, and you can tell people what it is we're going to talk about here today. One, two, three, four, five. You hearing me, uh, Tim? You're cutting out? Cutting out. Okay. All right. Why don't you try to fix that? and see if you can't do that. So this way we don't go through this cutting out stuff. You see, I see, I text you yeah, text. no, I see it. I see it. Okay. All right, so uh, a couple of things that we're going to definitely talk about here today. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff. A lot of it's same old, same old. So I don't want to go through the same old, same old. I want to try to switch it up a little bit, give you some new news that I think you uh, would want to know about, some stuff that will be a lot of fun to talk about in the future, like when we start cooking here on the walk and talks. I'm going to want you to send me all your recipes. We'll try making your recipes. I'll probably just destroy them, but I will at least eat whatever it is that we create. All right, so uh, first thing, we're going to play a clip here for you. Last night, I think Herman Cain, uh, I, 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 was, I, was, I felt like I was listening to a, an older southern uh, version of myself in African-American body. Uh, I have been telling you for a while now that the way that we need to fight back and try to help uh, President Trump and help making America great again, trying to get our agenda through, all right, and get back on track instead of talking about all this Russia garbage, is that we need, the president needs to know, you know, that the American people who support him continue to support him, that we haven't lost our faith, that we understand the fact that some of this stuff that they're trying to, to bring up is just absolutely ridiculous, and he needs to know this. He's one guy, and he's sending out messages, and he needs more messages coming in. So Herman Cain last night got on Sean Hannity's show, and he said something, and he gave out the phone number to the White House, which I think is great. So, Tim, if you got that clip, let's play that clip. And his administration know that the American people have his back. The liberal media doesn't have his back. We know that. The Democrats don't have his back, we know that. And even some Republicans, as you indicated, don't have his back. The American people has his back, so to the American people, you need to call 202-456-1111 and let the president know that we have his back. We are fighting back. Okay, do you see that? That's, go to camera three, a more comfortable camera three. You need to call 202-456-1111. You need to call, all right? If you've got a phone call that you were going to make today to your cousin, you're going to make a phone call today to your friend, if you're sitting in traffic, I don't care what you're doing. You take the phone and you dial 202-456-1111, all right? And what you do is you tell the President of the United States that you are 110% behind him. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to call right now on my phone. All right? We're going to call. So give me a second. Let me get this thing on speakerphone. Oh, my goodness. I'm so bad at using these things. Give me a second. How the hell do I get back to this? Keypad. How do I do this? One, two, zero, two. What is it? Four, five, six. Is it four, five, six? Four, five, six, one, two, three, four. 
Let's see what happens. It's busy. It's busy. Wow. That's the beautiful thing. It's busy. So you just keep on keeping on, okay? You drown. You drown that White House with phone calls today. You drown it today. You drown it tomorrow. You make it a new story. Make it a new story that the phone lines at the White House were crippled. Crippled. And I'll tell you why it's so important that you do this. I remember I was in a conversation during an interview for They Come to America 2 with Congressman Peter King. Uh, for those of you who've seen it, you know, you remember the scene, he and I in his office, we're talking about uh, the stuff that's going on in, uh, down at the border. And at the, end of the, at the end of the interview, we had the cameras rolling. Uh, in fact, Tim, Tim's dad, Tim's dad was my cameraman. And we had the cameras rolling and I figured, you know, let me ask him some questions that are outside the realm of what it is that we've been talking about. And I said to him, Congressman, the American people are completely fed up with all of you in Washington, D.C. And he said, yeah, I know. And I said, you know, they feel as if nobody is representing them anymore. And he says, listen, they've got every single right to feel that way. What is the best way, Mr. Congressman, for Sally Jones and, and Billy Smith to get in front of you. What is the best way for the American who's frustrated, who isn't maybe a political wonk, uh, who is just so sick and tired of being sick and tired? What's the best thing? Is the best thing to get a picket and a sign and be in front of your, in front of your building? I mean, because so, I don't think many people really like to do that to begin with, they don't have the time. Is the best thing to send an email? Is the best thing to send a letter? What is the best thing to do? And he said, honestly, I can't believe I'm gonna be telling you to do this right now because I think it's gonna backfire on me. I said, well, what is it? He said, you know, who, people come to the office and they stand outside with a sign. He says, you know, they're otherwise annoying. He says, they sent an email, I get so many emails, you know, we take a look at them when we can. You know, sometimes they put them on our desk, we're so busy we go through them. He says, you send a letter, it gets mixed in with the different stuff that we get in, we get piled. Hey, I'll be with you in a second. <clears throat> we live? Okay. <clears throat> Give me one second, everybody. I'm trying to put some final, final touches on. Be with you in a second. Gonna send out the alert so people know. And boom. Alrighty, so I don't even know which camera I should be looking to. I guess I'm looking into this camera right here. All right, actually, uh, Tim, do we have camera three? Makes it a little bit easier for me. Do we have camera three? Can we put that on me? We're doing a little test here. We're trying to see how it works from our kitchen. We've uh, been putting up cameras and lights all day. Um, unfortunately, we're running into a little bit of a, uh, a headache, if you will, with uh, some of the technology here. This shouldn't be the case, but it is. Um, anyway, so we're gonna talk about a couple of different things today. Hopefully, maybe, uh, Harlan will be joining me because that was the plan. Uh, he's here in the building and um, he's trying to fix some sort of audio problem, which shouldn't be a problem, but it is. So anyway, we're gonna go over a couple of different things. First of all, uh, I need to give you a big, big, huge apology. In fact, I'll tell you what, Tim, before we get into that, while we let the crowd build here a little bit, why don't we do this? Why don't we show them our different camera angles? Let's go to camera number one. Okay, that's not camera number one. That's camera number one, there you go. So we're trying to incorporate the entire kitchen in here. And um, what's the story? 